The other type of IUPAC rules we have for naming compounds deal with molecular compounds. Uh, now these are compounds that do not have any ions. If they were ions, they would be using ionic rules. They are instead what we call molecular. They can be solids, liquids, or gases at room temperature. They're usually very poor conductors of electricity. Many of them will not dissolve in water. Some of them will, but many of them won't. And they're all combinations of two or more non-metals. Now, this is key. That means on your periodic table, where that staircase is, and you have the metals on the right-hand side, sorry, the left-hand side, your non-metals are over here. They are on the right-hand side of the staircase. So if you look at your periodic table and the items that you're using to build a compound come from over here, you know you're dealing with a molecular compound. As in ionic compounds, many of these have uh, old-fashioned common names, and you should get to know some of these. Many kids are familiar with water is H2O. Ammonia is NH3. Natural gas, CH4, also known as methane. And sugar. C12H22O11. So here's some common names you're going to run into from time to time. Now, what actually goes on in a molecular bond is pretty straightforward. We've taught you already about the uh, the octet rule, in which elements uh, like to attain stability by completing their outer orbit and filling it up with eight electrons. In ionic bonding, they do it by exchanging an electron. One person gives it, the other person takes it. In molecular compounds, we do what's called a covalent bond. And what this means is, co means together, valent is the outside layer of electrons. So a covalent bond is where we share their valence or their outer electrons with each other. They're not transferred they're being shared and they share them in pairs. Now the best way to understand that is to have a look at an example. So here are two atoms of chlorine and chlorine will form a molecule of chlorine, it's a molecular compound, uh, it'll be Cl2 and it works just like this. If you look at my, uh, my chlorines that I've got here, notice that in the outside orbital of this chlorine I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven electrons and we're just one electron away from filling that outer orbit. Well here's how they do it. I'll just erase those marks I made and simply grab one chlorine and I'll bring it over to the other one. There we go. And now we see that they're, the two of them are now sharing these electrons. So if you look at the pairs of shared electrons right here, both of these chlorine atoms feel as if they've got a full eight. So this one says, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then of course number seven and number eight are shared. And he says, I'm happy. The other chlorine says, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. Both of these uh, atoms feel quite satisfied now that they've got eight electrons in their valence or their outer shell. Here's a pretty common one that you see a lot. Here's a, a molecule of water made up of a, an atom of oxygen. So here's our atom of oxygen up here and uh, two atoms of hydrogen. Now if you look at that oxygen you can count the electrons in his valence orbit and you can see he's got one, two, three, four. He's got six. He's short by two. He just needs two more electrons. Well how does he do it? It's really simple. In comes the hydrogen. Here's one. Here's the other. And now the oxygen can say, okay, I've got eight uh, in my valence layer. I'm very, very happy now. And the hydrogens have each got two. Now remember, the very, very first layer, the smallest layer, can only hold two. So that takes care of those hydrogens. A few other things to remember about uh, molecular elements. Uh, they are made up of only one type of atom. So you, you've seen these already uh, in the case of chlorine. Some of them are monoatomic, which means they're only made up of one atom at a time. Uh, so things like carbon is just made up of uh, carbon. That's all there is to, to it. Helium is by itself. Neon is by itself. Argon is by itself. Krypton is by itself. And xenon is by itself. Now those are all the noble gases from column number eight. Many of them are diatomic, which means they come in twos. So we already saw one where we looked at chlorine, but uh, all of his friends who are also in the seventh family, fluorine, bromine, and iodine, they are also uh, come in twos and they're diatomic. Other famous ones are hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, and oxygen. 
There's a few out there that are polyatomic, and poly just means made up of more than a couple. So we have things like O3, which is ozone, uh, P4, for phosphorus, and S8 for sulfur. Now, there's no real easy way on this. You're just going to have to learn to memorize some of these. Naming them is, is not so difficult. It's kind of similar to ionic compounds, but we use Greek number prefixes uh, also. And so over here is a little chart of these Greek number prefixes over here going from 1 to 10. And basically we're teaching you to count in Greek, I guess. The first element always keeps his own name. The second one changes his ending to I. So that's, that's rather similar to ionic compounds. Uh, don't bother using the prefix mono for the first element, only for the second. So for example, if we're going to try and name this first one, here is uh, CO2. And maybe this is more familiar to you as carbon. Carbon. And the word for two oxygens would be di oxide carbon dioxide now because carbon is alone but it's the first element i don't call it monocarbon dioxide i don't do that for the first element i might do it for the second one but not for the first one so he's just carbon dioxide the second one here has uh, two nitrogens and one oxygen so this one i would call di nitrogen monoxide and I'm going to run out of room here, but try to squeeze it in. Dinitrogen monoxide. So I'll use mono for the second uh, fellow, but not the first one. Uh, here we've got uh, this, this compound here. I've got one phosphorus, so I'm just going to call him phosphorus. Phosphorus. And I've got three chlorine. So for that word, I use tri. Trichloride. Phosphorus trichloride. Now, Going from the English words into the formula is also pretty easy. For example, this one here says uh, oxygen difluoride. Tells you exactly what you got going on here. You've got an oxygen and you've got two fluorines. So you're going to have your F for fluorine and a subscript of two. Uh, the name actually tells you what the count is. Dinitrogen tetrasulfide. Di tetra. Okay, dinitrogen. That means two nitrogens and tetrasulfide. S for sulfur, and four of them, because the word tetra means four. Sulfur trioxide, sulfur trioxide. So that's oxygen taken three times. So many kids find these ones fairly straightforward. And now you can try practicing on your own.